In this video, I'm gonna show you how I use one of my favorite flavorings, the wedding bouquet. Hi, it's Carolyn. If you wanna learn how to bake and decorate amazing cakes, then I would love for you to join me by hitting subscribe and the bell. <laughs> Today's video, I'm gonna show you how I use one of my most favorite flavorings. It is Wedding Bouquet, and it is so delicious. And you ask, what is Wedding Bouquet flavoring? A lot of people don't know. The one that I use has hints of vanilla, almond, and citrus, and it is so good. It's one of those flavors that people are reluctant to try, um, but when, when they do, they love it. I get it from the sweet lady, Sandra. She's down in Louisiana, Miss Sandra. It comes in different sizes. The, I always get the gigantic one, as my boyfriend would say. <laughs> but this one, it's almost gone. So I just got another one delivered and I just keep it refrigerated and it can last, it lasts for months in the refrigerator. So I will link below the website where you can get this amazing flavoring and I'm gonna show you how I make it into a cake and an icing. So let's get into the video. All right, to make this recipe, you're going to need one cup of flour, this is all-purpose flour, one cup of granulated sugar, one box of yellow cake mix, it's, this is 15.25 ounces. I prefer to use Betty Crocker over all of the others, however, you can use any other name brand cake mix. One cup of full-fat sour cream. If you don't want to use sour cream, you can replace it with full-fat Greek yogurt. And the sour cream, I like to add when it's cold. A lot of people recommend that you add room temperature ingredients, but I like to add cold sour cream. I feel like when it gets to room temperature, it gets a little too runny. One cup of milk. This is whole milk, full fat milk. I always recommend full fat milk. That way there's a higher fat content and it can help keep your cake moist. <laughs> And again, I usually add the milk when it's cold. I don't like to let milk sit out too long. However, um, you can do it at room temperature if you prefer. Three large eggs. With the eggs, I like to add them at room temperature. And the star of the show, the wedding bouquet flavoring. I will put a link so you can order it below. To start, I'm gonna add the entire cup of flour and the entire cup of sugar to the mixing bowl and the entire bag of the yellow cake mix. And I'm going to mix that on low for about 15 to 20 seconds. And then while that's mixing, I'm going to add the entire cup of whole milk. And just keep mixing that on low until it's all incorporated. Now I'm gonna add the entire cup of the full fat sour cream. and just mix that on low for about 15 to 20 seconds till it's all incorporated. Now as that's mixing on its low or, or one out of 10, I'm gonna add the eggs one at a time. You wanna add them one at a time and make sure that they are completely mixed into the batter. That way they can be evenly distributed in the batter. And then for this wedding bouquet, it does say refrigerate and shake well for best results. So this has been stored in the refrigerator. And before I add it, I'm gonna shake it really well. And I usually eyeball it, but for video purposes, I will measure. So I'm gonna add two tablespoons of the wedding bouquet and just mix that on low for about 10 seconds. And now I just want to scrape down the sides and the bottom. If you have a scraper blade, you can skip this step. I just don't like using scraper blades. I wanna put this on about five out of 10 for about a minute and a half to a minute and 45 seconds to, this will help whip air into it and it's gonna help make the cake rise. And look how beautiful and silky this batter is. Now let's add it to the cake pans. I have my oven preheated to 350. Inside my oven, uh, this is something that I've been doing for about 20 years. I keep two cookie sheets on the bottom rack. 
Uh, I was told years ago <laughs> that it helps evenly distribute the heat in the oven. However, with these newer ovens, I don't think it's necessary. However, I have just been doing it for so long that I just keep them there. And this rack is set in the middle. Now I bake in two inch high cake pans. I love Fat Daddy-O's pans. These are my favorite ones. Um, I will link these below. And I'm making three five inch cakes with this recipe. To prepare my pans, I have this boar bristle uh, pastry brush and some of my cake pan grease. And I have a video on how I make this. This helps the cake release instantly from the pan. And what you wanna do is just get a thin coating on the bottom and up the sides. And if you've seen my videos, you know I put a flour nail, or this is actually a heating core nail, in the middle of all of my cakes. The metal in the middle is going to help the cake bake from the middle, and then the, the pan is going to help the cake bake from the outside. It just helps your cake bake more evenly when you put a flour nail or a metal nail in the middle. So I just want to get a little bit of the grease on that top part and put it down on in the center of the cake pan and i like to fill my cake pans about three quarters of the way full you could do half to three quarters i like to just stir the entire thing with my spatula before i add it just make sure it's all mixed together and evenly spacing these out and i'm going to bake them for about 40 minutes and i will check on them to see how they are doing all right, it's been 40 minutes. I just want to check on these real quick. And this looks pretty good, actually, wow. And these are all done. The skewer came out clean. So I'm gonna take these out. And I'm just gonna let them sit here for about two minutes and then I'm gonna wrap them up. I have an 18 inch long roll of food safe plastic. This has been uh, cooling for about two to three minutes and I'm just going to turn it upside down and you see how the cake pan grease helps release it right away. Just remove that nail and wrap it up. So the cake is still warm. It's not gonna melt the plastic. The plastic is gonna shrink wrap around the cake and when you wrap up the cake when it's warm it's going to trap in all the moisture and keep your cake really moist and that let me wrap up the other two and now i have my freezer here so this is a freezer dedicated completely to my cakes and i have a little shelf in here and i like to use cake box lids that way i don't get the lines in the cake i don't know i just like to put cake box lids down and I'm just going to put all of the cakes in here. Leave them in there until I am ready to thaw them and fill them. All right, to make my icing, this is my American buttercream. You're going to need two and a half sticks of butter. This is 20 tablespoons and it is softened. So it's not very soft, but I can press my finger in it and make a dent. Three quarter cup of Sweet Tex high ratio shortening. In the summer, in the hotter months, I use three quarters of a cup in this recipe. In the cooler months, I only use a half cup. The shortening helps stabilize the buttercream. It melts at a higher temperature, so it um, the buttercream holds up better in warmer weather when you have the shortening added. I recommend using Sweet Tex High Ratio Shortening. Um, it is an investment. You have to buy a 50 pound block unless you get it on somewhere like Etsy. However, I do have a video showing different comparisons of shortening. You can use other shortenings if you'd like, but the Sweet Tex gives the best result. I will link that video below. A two pound bag of confectioner sugar, 10X powdered sugar. A couple teaspoons of liquid, depending on your humidity, you may have to add varying amounts. I like to use water. I just re use regular temperature, room temperature water. However, you can use cream or milk or whatever else you'd like. And again, the star of the show, the wedding bouquet flavoring. To start, I'm adding the two and a half sticks of butter to the bowl. And put that on about a four out of 10 for about 20 seconds. And then adding the entire three quarter cup of the high ratio shortening. And then mix that on about a four or five out of 10 for another 20 seconds. 
So now I have found that it won't stick to the bottom. Why do I say it like that? <laughs> it won't stick to the bottom of the bowl um, if I add some liquid first. So this is a coffee scoop. It's about a tablespoon. So I just like to use this because it has a long handle. I'm going to add three tablespoons to the bottom. I want to have a towel on top of here so my, I don't have sugar all over my kitchen. I'm going to add the entire bag of sugar and then just turn it on low a couple times to start mixing the sugar just pulse it that way you can remove the bag and now i'm going to lock this into place i'm going to cover this with a towel so you won't be able to see it and i'm going to mix it on low until it's all incorporated i'll hear it come together now it's starting to slow down i just want to turn it up another notch okay so this needs more liquid it is way too dry and we can add the flavoring now so again shaking this and depending on how strong you want it, you can add between, you know, one and two tablespoons. I'm just gonna start with one and see how strong that is. And then I'm also gonna add another, it is pretty dry here today. So I'm gonna do another one and a half tablespoons of the liquid and then mix that together. And then I just want to scrape down the sides and the bottom. And it is still a little tough to get my spatula through it. So I'm just going to add another half tablespoon of liquid. So that was, what, five tablespoons total. And like, like I said, it's going to vary depending on how humid it is. You don't want it too runny. You don't want it too stiff. So you have to find a happy medium. And I'm just going to mix that again on about a five out of 10 for about 20 seconds. And here is the beautiful, delicious wedding bouquet icing. So there you go. There is how I use the wedding bouquet flavoring and is basically using my basic Dr. Cake Mix recipe and adding the wedding bouquet instead of the vanilla flavoring and the same thing for the icing. Now I have a few notes here. Actually, I have tons of notes, tons of things that I wanted to go over and I don't want to forget. So a couple things. The icing, one batch of my icing yields about six cups and that will be enough to fill and frost like an eight inch cake. For the most part, I just use this wedding bouquet icing as a filling. Sometimes people get it as the icing on the outside of the cake as well. Now you can make this less sweet by adding less powdered sugar in the icing. So instead of doing the entire two pound bag, I would do three quarters of the bag, which would be a pound and a half. And that was quick math. <laughs> And I just like, that's right. Three quarters is a pound and a half. So you can always reduce the sugar a little bit in the icing if you don't want it to be as sweet. And I go through so much icing that I don't have to worry about freezing it or anything or storing it for a long time. But if you want to store this icing, I would keep it in an airtight container in the refrigerator for a couple weeks. Um, and then if you made too much and you don't need it and you want to save it for later, you can wrap, I would keep it in the plastic container, wrap it in, pl in plastic wrap, and then stick it in the freezer and that could last probably, uh, you know, a couple months. And I personally only, only, <laughs> I personally only work with American buttercream. I don't do meringue buttercreams. However, you can add this flavoring to other types of icing as well. So you don't only have to make American buttercream icing with this flavoring. And that, is that obvious? <laughs> I feel like that, that, you know what? I'm gonna say it because maybe somebody doesn't know. And for the cake, I added a little bit more flavoring. I did two tablespoons, but for the icing, I did one. So you can mess around with different amounts of the flavoring. Why am I talking like that? <laughs> You mess around with the different amounts of the flavoring that you want to add to the cake or to the icing, depending on how strong you want it to be. Now, as you saw, I have these wrapped up and in the freezer until I'm ready to use them. I did take a little post-it note and put down wed for wedding so I know what flavor it is because sometimes I make vanilla and if I make a five inch vanilla cake, it's gonna look exactly the same. So I like to label some of my cakes so I know what they are. Now, let me put this away. I do have a video talking about not wasting cake batter. So I like to divide the amounts into thirds. So I'm going to link it below. I don't want to explain it right now, but sometimes why, why am I going like this? I didn't itch on my forehead, but 
Um, sometimes I don't need to make an entire batch. If I'm only making two five inch pans or two six inch cake pans, then I could do two thirds of the batch. And that video will be linked below so you don't have to waste the cake batter by making the entire batch. And the same thing goes with the icing. For the most part, I don't make an entire batch of that wedding bouquet icing because I don't use it that much because people are scared to, to order it. <laughs> I usually put it in the cupcake tester boxes that I make, which I'll put a video below on how I do those too. But for the icing, I would do the same thing. If I don't need an entire batch, I'll just take a little bit of vanilla buttercream, add a little bit of wedding bouquet, mix it in, and bam, wedding bouquet flavored icing. And lastly, what flavors does this pair well with? When I make wedding bouquet cake, I love to use raspberry buttercream filling. It's amazing. And I have a video on how I make it, and I will link it below or the strawberry filling as well, and I can link that below. And a lot of times people also get the wedding bouquet filling with the cake or just regular vanilla or cream cheese filling. And then cakes that pair well with the wedding bouquet flavoring, like I said, the wedding bouquet cake, or lemon cake tastes really good with it, and strawberry as well. And I think I've actually done marble too, which I think is a little weird, but people like what they like. <laughs> and uh, vanilla cake as well. So I am going to stop rambling. I know I keep going on and on, but I want to answer everybody's questions because I know people are going to have questions about it. But again, I'm going to link the wedding bouquet flavoring in the description below. You don't have to get the gigantic bottle <laughs> like I do. They're smaller sizes and just try it out. See if you like it. It is so delicious and I think you're going to love it. So I think that's it. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. <laughs> And if you want to, you can follow me on social media and check out my website. It's listed in the description below as well. And if you want to stick around, you can watch these two videos next and hit subscribe and the bell if you haven't already. Please like this video if you liked it. Thank you so much for watching. And remember, it's cake. It's delicious. <laughs> Have fun. I will see you on the next one. Bye.